This video is brought to you by Triple Sleeve TCG. Check out their website at triplesleevetcg.com. Hey guys, I got another deck profile for you today. My name is Richard. We got Keter Sanctuary, Hexa Orb, and uh, DBTO2 got some pretty decent support to make the deck a little bit better. And I'm actually kind of enjoying the way this deck plays compared to last set where it was just like there was no real good filtering or deck searching. But now there is. So I want to show you guys how I uh, put the deck together so you guys can kind of see what I've been playing with and how I like to play the deck. So I'm just going to go over the ride deck real quick. So our starter, uh, anyone you want, but try connect because, you know, it fits the theme. Uh, grade one is tier square sorceress. So when pentagleam sorceress rides on this, you can just want to draw a card. Uh, we don't run this in the main deck, but it's at the skill is when you drive, check a trigger, you can list one, choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards to put on the bottom of your deck. You can play this in the main deck if you want to do a little more control, but I just feel like it's a little counter blast heavy um, for this deck now, so this is definitely, you don't want to run this in the main deck. Uh, grade 2, Pentagleam Sorceress. Um, when this unit is rode upon by Hex Orb, you look at the top three cards of your deck, and you put them on the top of your deck in any order, uh, which is pretty, really helpful a lot. Uh, the other skill is when it's placed on rear, uh, you look at the top card of your deck, and you can put it on the top or bottom, and if you put it on the bottom, it gets 2k. So that's pretty helpful. I do run this in the main deck as well. Um, I know some people are running the Blaster Dark in their ride deck because they think these cards aren't that great for Hex War, but I still think this is really helpful just to see what the top three is, so you can kind of set up for early game plays uh, manipulating your deck right from the get-go. So I, I like... Uh, Pentagleam. And lastly, for the grade 3 or the ride deck, we got our main boss, Hex Orb Sorceress. Uh, Hex Orb skill is when you drive check a trigger unit, uh, you choose one of your rear guards and he gets 10k. So you're getting an extra 10k off of a trigger. The other skill is Act. Once per turn, if you Persona Road this turn, count less one, soul less one, reveal, re <laughs> reveal a crit or front from your hand, you put it on the top of your deck, and this gets triple drive. So uh, you put a crit on top, your opponent feels threatened by a crit. Fronts if you're pushing for game. Uh, the new front triggers are really great, so running there's a higher incentive to run fronts. So, yeah, uh, pretty uh, pretty decent skill. It does suck for the Persona ride, but it does make sense. So, you know, you don't want it to be overpowered right from your ride. You can just be triple driving and all that good stuff. So, um, But when you do Persona ride, it's a pretty good skill. So for the main deck, uh, Persona Riding is the main focus of the deck, so we have to run three copies. So three copies of Hex Orb Sorceress um, speaks for itself for the most part. Next up for the Grade 3s, uh, we got best Grade 3 in Keter Sanctuary. We got Knight of War Damage Fasado. Fasado's skill is when its attack is when its attack hits, you can counter charge and soul charge, and this unit can't be chosen by your opponent's card effects. So that's really helpful um, against matchups like Seraph Snow, um, against uh, Nirvana, uh, when it comes to stuff being popped off. It's just a really good skill overall, just not being able to be targeted as a retired target, especially of how good it is of when it hits, you get to get your resources back. And since Hex Orb and a lot of cards use Soul and Counter Blast, this is a great card. Um, you can run four if you want to run four. Um, I'm only running three at the moment in this deck just for space and consistency, and I feel like the three work fine, uh, but it's up to you. This is a really good card, so if you want to run four, go ahead and run four. Um, next up, I run two copies of Octa Devotee Sorceress. So Octa Devotee Sorceress skill is when your drive track reveals a trigger unit and your vanguard is Hex Orb. You can retire this unit to counter charge or soul charge. Uh, it does suck that it's when you reveal the trigger, so you can't really play it and you know do it after it attacks or something. So you can't put the trigger on it because you have to sack it afterwards, but it's fine. Um, this is really helpful more like during the battle phase if you have cards like um, Lapisto or if you just want to uh, set up for next turn and guarantee your counter blast uh, just so you can have it on the board as a retire target. but that's about it. It kind of sucks that it's a grade three because you're kind of just going to throw it behind another unit 
Um, but I like it for the counter charge or soul charge factor, so you can kind of get either or. Um, but if you don't want to run this, you can obviously run more cards like Lepisto or another Fasado. But I think this is a good card just because it's a guaranteed counter charge if you get a trigger versus Fasado needing to hit. So two copies for me. Next up, two copies of Divine Sister Lepisto. So, or Le yeah, Lepisto. When your drive check reveals a trigger, you kind of blast two. Standard gets 5k. This deck revolves all around getting your triggers. So you're for the most part almost guaranteed when you swing with this, your opponent's going to know you're going to restand it, but extra attacks is always great. Um, kind of blast heavy though, because it's kind of blast two. So I don't see myself using it super often, but when it does go off and pop off on the board, it's a really great card. So that's it for grade threes. Um, moving on to the grade twos. We got... Four copies of a new card from set two, Exquisite Knight, Olwain. So Olwain's skill is when this is placed in the rearguard circle, if your vanguard is Hex Orb Sorceress, you Soul Blast one, you look at the top two cards of your deck, choose two cards from among them, and you put them on the top of your deck in any order. And if you don't pick any of them, you put the rest on the bottom of your deck. So instead of it being like just the top two, you pick one, the other goes to the bottom. You can look at top two, both on top, both on bottom, one top, one bottom, it's up to you. The other skill is rear, when your drive check reveals a trigger, you count last one, gets 10k. So this is if you're pushing, you want that extra 10k just to you know be a big, big old number, pressure your opponent, the option is there for you. Uh, mostly running it just for the first skill, just be, to manipulate the top of the deck, get those triggers going. Um, but other than that, that's that's what the card does, it's really good. I like, I like the artwork a lot too, a little golden knight action going on in there. So lastly for grade twos, I did say I was running this in a main deck. It's two copies of Pentagleam, the grade two from a ride deck. I like Pentagleam a lot just because it's free. There's no cost, so you just play it. Uh, you can call it off card abilities. So it's called from like the deck or called from your hand. You look at top card, put on top or bottom. Uh, if you put on bottom, gets 2K. It's just a free, free manipulate. You know, if you don't know what the top of your deck is and you want to kind of start get the ball rolling, play it down, cost nothing. You got an interceptor and a beater. Decent card. Um, yeah, I just had space, and this seemed like the best the best last two cards to put in the slot. So that was it for grade twos. On to grade ones. We got a new grade one. This card is amazing. It's a Diaglass Sorceress. So Diaglass Sorceress skill is when this is placed on R from hand, you're, if your Vanguard is Hex Orb or Pentagleam, you can count us one, discard a card from your hand. You look at the top two cards of your deck, uh, you choose two units from among them, you call them the rear. Or uh, you put the rest on the top of your deck. So this is really nice because your outcome is either you call two things, or you put two things on the top of your deck, so two triggers, or you call a card and the other card is a trigger and you leave it on top. So you're filling your board. If you look at the top two cards of your deck and it's like, ah, look, uh, just normal units, you just call them suckers. So you just called a card, discarded a card, you got two more cards, you know? So, just fill in your board, and if it's triggers, boom, you know you got triggers on the top of your deck. Fill your board afterwards, you know. Um, I think this card goes great after you use Pentagleam skill from the Vanguard Circle. If you ride Hex Orb, you look at the top three cards, you notice like two out of the three of them are non-triggers. So you order it with the non-triggers are on the top, call this, fill your board. Your next card, you know for sure it's a trigger, you know. Then you just go from there. Maybe the card underneath that triggers another trigger and you just kind of rush your opponent with triggers. This card is really great with the way it helps with setups. You got to run four of it. Um, next up for grade ones, um, we got four copies of a card from set one, Painkiller Angel. Painkiller Angel is still really good, in my opinion. Uh, at the end of the battle that it boosts, uh, you Soul Blast one, retire this, and you draw a card. So really good early game just as a beat stick. Um, you throw this behind Van if you just want to make it so your opponent can't, like, no-pass it. Um, and even after you throw it down as a booster, you just soul bless one, retire it, draw a card. Main purpose of this card is to rush through the deck and look for Hex Orb, because the deck kind of doesn't really do anything much unless you ride Hex Orb Sorceress. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you don't have another copy of Hex Orb in your hand, you want to kind of use this to ramp up, go through your deck, filter through, 
you know, drawing cards till you see it. Because once you ride Hex Orb, you got that trouble driving that crit or that front going and kind of helps the deck function. So I really like uh, Painkiller for that reason. Um, lastly, for the grade ones, or I should say uh, before I get to the PGs, um, I got two copies, Divine Sister Tartine. Tartine's skill is when it's placed, you Soul Lost 1, rest it, look at the top two cards of your deck. You have to pick one to go on top, the other one has to go on the bottom. You can't just kind of like pick one both on top or both on bottom. Uh, this is still nice because if you call it off, um, uh, what's her name? Diagleam, uh, or Diaglass, I'm sorry. If you call it off Diaglass, you can still proc its ability, soul, soul Blast, rest it, um, until the top two. So that still helps if you really don't know what like what's going on with your deck yet. It's just an easier cost to pay. Um, there's really much else I think would be a good spot for this, um, since the rest of the greed ones are just play sets, you have to run four of those. So this still kind of makes some good plays every now and then. And lastly, for grade ones, just four perfect cards. Uh, the newer ones from set one, so it's the ones where if you have two or less, or if you have two or more, you have to discard a card, so if you have one card in your hand after your PG, you can, you don't have to discard, so... It, uh, it's nice for Persona riding if you want to keep that Persona ride in your hand, or if you have two PGs as your last two cards, you basically can guard two attacks for free. So that was it for the normal units onto the trigger zone, or trigger triggers that are going to be in your trigger zone. Uh, uh, a Martinoa, obviously your over-trigger. Uh, its additional effect when you drive check it is uh, at the end, uh, until the end of turn, uh, you can also perform drive checks for your rear guards. Um, you do run some pretty decent grade threes as rear guards, so being able to get drive checks off those is nice. Um, but also the fact that the deck just kind of filters through and searches out triggers. If you see this going as you're searching through, you can just kind of sit it on top of your deck and kind of set up your plays that way. Um, but yeah, Armatino makes some really good plays, especially in this deck. So I really high re highly recommend getting a Martinoa for the Hex Orb deck. Uh, next up, I'll show off the newer triggers. We got the front triggers. Bard of Heaven's Song, Alpac. So Alpac skill is if your opponent's at grade three, this gets 5k shield. So higher defense is always nice. It's kind of like in V-Series when we had heals with 20k shields. So we're kind of back to that, except you now have offensive triggers and it kind of encourages you to run fronts. And... Um, you know, Hexorb likes fronts too, because you can put this front back on the top of your deck. So that's always nice. Um, moving on, I still like to run crits, because, you know, crits win games. So I got four copies of the crit from the booster set, White Fang Witch Dizma. Ooh, there you go. So I have four crits in there. Uh, then I still run draws. So we got Exalting Knight. Ear Fred, Ear Fred. Uh, the reason I run draws is the same reason as when I was putting this deck together and I was kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to run draws or not. And Gabe said, well, if you want to see Hex Orb, you should probably run draws because you want to draw into it. And I was like, that makes sense. So I run draws now. <laughs> and the draws are still good. You know, damage trick a draw, good. You see a draw, you're kind of scalping your deck and you see draw trigger on the top, boom, put it there. You're going to draw some extra cards thanks to that. Draw trigger if it's early game and the extra crits in the fronts to really matter. I feel like the draws are still helpful to resource manage and, you know, search out your hex orbs. So I like the draw triggers in my deck. And last but not least, you got to run your four heals, you know. So got to gotta keep the uh, sorceress theme going too. So we got the sorceress triggers. So that was it for the main deck. Um... I would say that the, the best plays that you're going to go with when you're playing this deck is you're going to want to, you know, after you ride Pentagleam, after you counterblast, you draw your card. If you do have an extra counterblast, I do think it is helpful to just kind of start calling this to the rearguard circle as well. And you can counterblast one. If you see two normal units, just call them out, fill your board up. Um, really great way to kind of ramp up the deck instead of just sitting on your your little 10k beat stick still good but also even better than that is whenever you ride into hex orb 
and you just, you know, you just, boom, hex orb. Look at top three. Know what those top three are. Call this and kind of filter your deck based on that. So um, yeah, um, this card is just so good. The knight card, the exquisite knight Olin. Olin's also just really great just because he um, gets power. His cost is just a soul blast and not like a counter blast and discard. Uh, even though he doesn't call anything, just being able to like manipulate the top of your deck a little easier is always helpful. So these cards are just really great addition to Hex Orb. And if you're really wanting to play like a cheaper Keter Sanctuary variant other than like Phantom Blaster Dragon, this is still a really fun deck to play. And I do recommend playing it because I have had some really fun plays with this deck because who doesn't like getting triggers? You know, it's just like a, do a boost of dopamine just getting off a trigger. So, uh, yeah, that's all I can really say about the Hex Orb deck. Um, competitively wise, it's still in the same spot. I would say it's not like one of the best decks by far. Um, but I still think the deck is fun to play and it can still make some really janky plays. Um, that's all I really got to say about it. Thank you guys for watching the deck profile. If you have any other comments, uh, questions that you want to ask about like like my opinions on running certain cards, feel free to ask them in the comment section. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, my name is Richard, and I'll see you on the next deck profile. Bye.